What's up guys, JQ back with Tech Creation where I use technology for recreation. So I waited two years for the Gear S4 and instead, Samsung gave us the Galaxy Watch. Now not much has changed, but I do have a lot to say. So let's not waste any time. So we get three colors with the watch. That's silver, midnight black, and rose gold. Now the black and gold is only available in the smaller 42 millimeter watch face with the 20 millimeter strap. And the silver is only available in the 46 millimeter face with the 22 millimeter strap. And I chose the silver one because on a man's wrist, it feels like a normal size watch. Out the box, it does come with a rubberized buckled sport strap that collects a lot of lint. And while it can be comfortable as your wrist expands throughout the day adjusting it on the fly isn't that convenient i like to have a little more play when it comes to that now thankfully swapping out the bands is the same as the gear s3 is just the basic spring pin that you push down and it slides right out it only takes a couple seconds of course having nails helps with this now i went ahead and picked up this finty milanese band with a magnetic closure i'll leave a link to this down below and i've always been a fan of these silky bands because they fluidly wrap around your wrist making it much easier to adjust later on and not only that i mean just look at it it completely the entire two-tone black and silver look and in my opinion looks so much more fire than the Gear S3. The darker black rotating bezel together with those black textured buttons contrasts nicely against that stainless steel silver casing and anybody who knows me knows that this screams my style. It never feels too flashy or too sporty and it just hits the sweet spot for me. But if you pick up the LTE model that's gonna run you 400 bucks. So it depends on what your needs are but that model is supported by all four major carriers using eSIM technology and it ships with double the RAM with 1.5 gigs but I'm personally straight with the Bluetooth only model simply because I'm always paired up to my smartphone otherwise it just makes no sense. Now Samsung beefed up the IP68 tolerance which is now waterproof up to 50 meters matching the Gear S3 Sport Edition that was released last year and I didn't really go to the extremes in testing that because I think 50 meters covers most accidental scenarios. Now it still charges wirelessly with the familiar magnetic charging cradle featuring the LED battery indicator up front. I don't believe it's certified fast charge but I meant the charging speed at about 1% per minute give or take which is great and despite it using the Qi wireless standard it's not compatible with other Qi wireless chargers it could be because of the magnets in the back of the case or it's just using a different protocol like the pixel 3 does I'm not really sure but I think the added convenience would have been nice to see immediately I noticed the new bezels feels different it's much flatter now and the ridges aren't as pronounced as the gears 3 functionality remains the same you have this smooth indefinite spinning with those satisfying clicks and that same subtle vibration when you reach the end of the menu. Now on the 46 millimeter model, we get the same screen size and pixel density from the Gear S3 with a 1.3 inch Super AMOLED display. And the glass actually has been upgraded from Corning Gorilla Glass SR Plus to now DX Plus, which is supposed to provide better clarity, improved scratch resistance, as well as greater contrast. And I noticed some improvements in screen elements here and there, but to the average person, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I gotta give credit to how durable these watches are. I banged my wrist against a washing machine while doing laundry the other day and my heart dropped because I thought the bezel was finished at that point. As you can see, that scrape looked permanent and I tried rubbing it off and that thing wasn't going anywhere so I began to panic. So what I did was I took a little bit of dish soap, a damp sponge, and a little bit of elbow grease and after a few minutes, it came right off. So whatever coating Samsung is using on that bezel definitely withstands real world use. Rotating the bezel cycles through Tizen OS. Swiping down, you can access your toggles like battery saver, airplane mode, do not disturb, and theater mode, which disables everything including the screen and will wake again when you engage the bezel or press a button. Now speaking of, this top button takes you one step back from wherever you're at, while the bottom one takes you home. And it's also your power button as well. You can swipe away notifications, take phone calls, respond to text messages. Now speaking of text messages, when it comes to composing one with your voice, Samsung's voice dictation still hasn't improved. You have to yell considerably loud. And let's say if you speak five words, it's only gonna pick up like two of them. And it's not really a microphone issue because during phone conversations, people heard me just fine. So I can only attribute that to Samsung's poor software. You're is better off communicating with the built-in responses or the emoji selections. It's easier and faster and that's really the whole point of a smartwatch. Now along with your pre-installed widgets like your calendar, your weather, your media controls, as well as all of your health bells and whistles, included now is a stress widget. This lets you regulate your stress levels with breathing exercises where you can customize your inhaling exhaling intervals. 
I only tried using it for testing purposes, but I guess if you're having a panic attack one day, I can see how that would come in handy. And in general, I didn't really use the health features like that because I don't really view this watch as a fitness watch, but more as an accessory. So with the vast catalog of watch faces from the gear store, this would keep you busy for a minute. Watch faces on top of watch faces on top of watch faces with styles that let you really showcase the novelty of a smartwatch. All kinds of concepts displaying metrics in unique ways, some that you can interact with, changing the style and color. Now they do have free ones but some of the more feature heavy ones you have to pay for ranging anywhere between one and three bucks and some of them I couldn't resist and I already spent about 15 bucks so far. This one I like a lot it's called Prometheus easily one of my favorites. A lot of subtle elements going on here. Another go-to for me is Cyberwatch Pro. This one offers quite a bit of customization and Stelvio is another watch face I happen to like a lot. This one's pretty slick. Now, some of them are a little over the top with animations like this Tron X Dark Ice, but if you ask me, it's worth the battery drain. And I'll talk more about the outstanding battery life towards the end. So on days when I can't decide, I just stick to the stock classic or this SMZ Night Pro digital watch face. Depends on how I feel that day. Now, my only beef with the gear store is that most of the apps feel experimental or incomplete. Pretty much all the apps have low ratings and for good reason too. For instance, the Philips Hue remote app while I can still toggle my smart home just fine sometimes it just feels choppy and the actual widget doesn't even work at all then I tried downloading another app a camera controller and the installation failed for whatever reason and sadly it's not just with the gear store apps so when I'm listening to music on Spotify Samsung's native music controls just seem to be way too inconsistent sometimes it'll work other times it won't no album art no song information it just seems to be frozen despite the music actually still playing and me skipping tracks so I downloaded the Spotify gear app instead which worked for a little while. To no surprise, that too began having connection issues of its own. And it's things like this that make this watch look amateur. I think this watch has so much more potential and I just wish that Samsung and developers put more attention to the function and polish of apps across the board because at the end of the day, it affects us the users and it makes Samsung look bad. But then again, Samsung also makes Samsung look bad by putting Bixby on a smartwatch. Bixby doesn't belong on a smartwatch. By yelling, hey Bixby, you can wake it up and ask for the weather or send a text message. But to my point earlier about voice pickup, it's the same issues. Not picking up the right words, you have to speak very loud, very slow, all to the point of frustration. And even if it was great at voice pickup, I couldn't stomach the assistant's horrible robotic voice. It just sounds really cheesy. And it's not something that I'm interested in using, so I just scroll past it and forget that it's there. Now, I gotta address that one big feature that they removed from the Galaxy Watch that pissed off a lot of people, including myself, and that's MST or Magstrap technology. Now, this was a big deal because this allowed you to make mobile payments at older checkout terminals that didn't support NFC. So while you can still use Samsung Pay on the watch by pressing and holding the top button and then entering your PIN, you're limited to NFC payments only. And I have a theory as to why Samsung did this. I don't think MST is the future. We're beginning to see NFC becoming available in more and more places. For example, you can already enter some banks and withdraw money from the ATM just using your watch. NFC tap to pay credit cards already exist and the MTA here in New York will soon begin accepting NFC payments on both the trains and buses and that says a lot because the MTA is always behind on everything. <laughs> now if Samsung removes MST from the upcoming Galaxy S10 then my theory was correct so we just have to wait and see. Now lastly onto the brighter side of things that battery life. The battery life on this watch is outstanding. So we get 25% more battery this time around. I'm recharging the watch about every three to four days. One day I left out of my house at with 30% on the watch and I came back with 10% and that was with moderate usage. That was also with the always on display turned off. I've never really been a fan of that. So obviously usage will vary. In short, this is not a watch that you're gonna have to be paranoid about charging whenever you have to run out last minute. So in conclusion, the Galaxy watch is more of a Hmm, which watch face am I gonna wear today? kind of smartwatch. The big takeaway is they need to improve the gear store, the apps, and the way the apps communicate with your phone. So I think if Samsung doubled down on their efforts, a lot more people would take the Galaxy Watch more serious. So if you guys agree with some of the points I made in this video and you share the same sentiments, make sure you let me know by dropping those comments down below and show some love to that like button. Make sure you subscribe and turn on the alerts notifications so you don't miss out on some more awesome tech videos. As always, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.